What people don't know is behind the scenes, I have to do a little clap. To, it's like the slate thing to start the recording. I'm and, watching you do that. And I'm, turns out I'm not good at clapping sometimes. Like, I make a really faint sound. You've I think that has to do with, I think that's a, a, uh, an obvious example of my lack of coordination. <laughs> This is episode 484, No Laugh Track Podcast. That is astounding. I had no idea you've been doing this this for this long, yes. this many times. That is the voice of Kostaki Economopolis, if you're only listening. But we're on YouTube, so hopefully you're watching the uh, visual as oh, well. Oh, cool. Yeah. I thought your soft claps would just speak to your super polite, white Midwesternness. You're like, I don't want to be too loud or bother anybody. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's there's people working in an office up upstairs. I mean, hushed tones, Kostaki. We don't want to overclap or anything. Yes, come on. This is we're we're, we're, we're here during business hours. <laughs> this is a comedy club. Keep it down. It's good to see you. How many times have I been on? Do you know that answer? Uh, I think I do. I could look real quickly while while, I have while to we're be chatting in the top here. Several. I think you are. Let me let me do a quick search here. Um, while we're talking, while I'm looking that up, why don't you tell me how the last two nights have gone here back at Acme? Oh, they're great. I love this place. I'm so happy to be back. Wednesday we had 220 people. It's crazy on a Wednesday. Now, this is kind of a special Wednesday. People are off work or whatever. Yes. Uh, but yeah, it was a pleasure. And last night was, uh, I don't know what the number is, maybe not quite as big a number, but really good crowd, really smart and like kind of that energy where they're into it, you know, the little, had that extra bump of like, we're digging this, keep going. Hell yeah. I so, found the results here. I, oh, found, I found the number. You got it in your phone just like that. Boom, well, boom. because when we hit 400, I posted uh, the numbers. Oh, okay. And I think, let's see, so this would have been, I think you've done two since then. These are alphabetical. So you, uh, we'll, we'll go, so it's like uh, Bill Dwyer, Mike Early, Kostaki, Economopolis. It was seven at the time, and I think this is two more. So I think this is nine, sir. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Do we have anything left to talk about? I think this is nine. <laughs> Alphabetically, you're followed by Alex Edelman, who has one. Dean Edwards, three at the time. I think we're at four or five now. So there, you just go from there. Did you say Bill Dwyer? Yeah. I like Bill Dwyer. I haven't seen him in a million years. Well, I haven't either. I haven't either. He's, he's done a few, but it's been a long time. So here you are back in the winter here. Yeah. Uh, what, you didn't want to come. Last time we were here was in July. Like, couldn't have been more opposite weather, time it's of year, funny, holiday. You know? I, yeah, there was a stretch where I did, way back in the day, I did a few winters in a row. And then I was like, I'm not doing that. And then I did only good weather trips for a few times. And then when you grow up as a comic, you're like, oh, but the people are there in the winter. That's where there's more audience. That's when, it, you know. So, yeah, when, when Lewis asked me to do New Year's, I was like, of course, of course. Flattered and honored to come New Year's. Are, do you right. normally do New Year's somewhere? Or yeah, you, always. You, you do. Because I know there's some comics who are like, no, I absolutely refuse. I, that's the night I don't want to be around people. Oh. Although I hear the paychecks can be good, and I there's a lot more shows going on. It seems. Yeah. For me, I don't have. I don't have like a thing where I like I miss being home. For New Year's, has no like emotional attachment for me personally. Like Christmas does. A couple other days, I'm kind of like, oh, kind of. I want to be home for that day, but I have none of that for New Year's. For me, New Year's is comedy. Okay. Yeah, that's what you're supposed to be doing on New Year's. And yeah. and yeah, like you said, usually the checks are two or three X what you would make some other time. So it's kind of a must do. I love New Year's comedy. It's fun. Okay. Do you remember New Year's before you were a comedian? Like when just young Kostaki was out partying? Yeah, vaguely. One year we actually made a trek to New York City and went to the whole scene. You know, as a Georgia boy, like we drove up. It was pre-internet and we had like, I had like the... Like the, I got like the road atlas for like Quality Inn or something, and we picked one in Queens, and called and made a reservation, yeah. and, and like had the map and figured out how to get there, and took the train in. Yeah, one year I did that, but usually it's just hanging with buddies and drinking, playing games and whatever. Sure. No, I was listening to something on the radio this week, and they. Were, they were saying how people were already lining, like showing up. They were setting up, not maybe they weren't showing up already, but they were setting up for the New Year's Eve, the ball drop at the, at the Big Apple. Yeah. And uh, the person I was listening to was talking about how, I guess it's like this well-known secret that some people wear diapers. Oh, I've when, heard that. When they're there that long, because once you get your spot, 
you don't leave because you're gonna lose your spot. It's funny, and, and, the and I, I mean, I, you know, New York bathrooms are hard to come by sometimes as as it is. So I, it's funny because I lived in New York for a while and I never went when I was there. Because first of all, I'm always on the road New Year's, right? But also, even if I were there, like it wouldn't occur to me to go there then because it's such a touristy thing, right? I it's I. I don't know. It's I don't think New Yorkers really do that, but I guess the people who come in do. It makes sense. <laughs> Diapers. What a crazy commitment to a thing. You're like, I don't care. I'm wearing a diaper. I'm gonna walk around in my own pee to start the year. <laughs> it's such a weird. You, that's when you really got to pay attention to uh, the temperature. <laughs> like, what are you mixing that wet diaper with? <laughs> uh, that's funny. I like New York, but I don't miss it. It's funny. I don't. I was there. I lived there for ten years. I don't miss it. Yeah. I there are some moments where I'm like, the the, the only thing I really miss about New York is walking to everything. Oh sure. I love that aspect where we could walk to the grocery store, walk to the school, walk to the shoe repair, walk. I walk to vote. Yeah. You know, like any given moment, my wife and I would be like. Let's just go out and eat somewhere, and we would just walk, and we could probably walk to 300 restaurants from where we were, you know? That part, I really, I like that, but the... What do you live close to now? Now, I actually... What can you walk to? I've actually chosen a place in L.A. that based almost completely on its walkability to a few things. We walk to, uh, there's a super cool farmer's market, and we're near... Uh, a couple of really cool parks and the, like a mall sprawl and we're actually walkable to the school that's the little one starts in next year oh, yeah. so that's part of the reason i picked that spot now it's not as you know when you live in manhattan you can walk to hundreds of things yeah, yeah yeah i live in la and i can walk to several things gotcha but they're key things and it was definitely part of my decision calculus sure yeah so I need to uh, I need to share something with you about something that happened to me just this afternoon. Okay. The a range of emotions I've gone through in the last two hours. What? Uh, I was very excited to come <laughs> talk to you. <laughs> yeah, <Peak>. yeah. <laughs> Getting ready to leave my house. Uh, couldn't find my wallet. Oh. Panicked. Absolutely panicked. That sucks. Yes. I too. I know I had it last night. I had. I found uh, my credit card and uh, like my. Um, Frequent user, whatever discount thing for the gas that I use, you know, got last uh-huh. night. Found those, could not find my wallet. Just absolutely, you know. And I'm like, I have to leave. I can't, all I all I want to do is keep looking around this house and tear everything apart. <laughs> my wife is there. My mother in law is there. They're trying to like politely, like, did you look? And I'm like, yeah, it's the first place I looked. Yeah, like, right. Trying to not scream, and um, it's in the jacket pocket. I got a text halfway here. They found it for me. Where? I had somehow put it on a chair in the li- living room. <laughs> I don't know why. You're dumb. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and get, so, such relief. I, such relief. I relate to this. I, I have lots of empathy for these moments. I had one last week myself. It was, I, I still am not sure what happened. I think I lost some money. I don't lose money. It's so random. I haven't done that in years and years and years. I, I lost money. Do you want to say how much? No. No. <laughs> oh no no was, oh no yeah it was awful and i'm going through same thing so i'm going through my wallet like wh- how much was in there uh, i think just a 20 but there's my this card right that card and my id and that one little note from one of my daughters that says i love you that she wrote like 10 years ago like, yeah i think that's in there like <laughs> <sighs> but here's here, here's the uh the kicker i guess it would be i have a I'm well known in my family and amongst my friends of misplacing things. Oh. Like I do this often. My wallet I haven't lost in a long time. Because you have the thing and you learn the pattern of always, you, you know, you do that, the double check. And I've, and I've been trained to, you know, I'm not good at it, but to put it in the same place every time. Some I, random chair in the room? Exactly. It's clearly I suck <laughs> at it. But here's the thing. So, like for my car keys, I have one of those. Well, I don't even bring it out. I have a little, like, uh, tracker on them. Oh, okay. So when I lose my car keys around the house or in my car, I just pull out the app and go... Oh, that's handy. And then I can find... Is it one of the Apple Tag things? It's not. It's a different company. But it's the same idea. Same idea. Okay. So I have one of those, and I've been using that for, geez, three, four years. And it's saved me a bunch of times finding my keys. I like that. More than you would imagine. I misplaced my keys. I got an anecdote for you. Okay, go ahead. But I I just want to finish, and I... 
Yeah. Uh, so then for Christmas this year, two weeks before Christmas, my wife goes, so I got to tell you something because it's not going to be here on time. I ordered you the wallet size tracker. <laughs> yeah. She goes, and they sent me the wrong one and they told me to keep it. Now they've sent me the wrong one a second time, and they told me they're going to send me the correct one, but it won't be here till after Christmas. Uh. So sh- my wife actually ordered me a tracker that's flat. It looks like a credit f- fard. <laughs> card, fits in your wallet. Wow. And I could have had it today to easily find that wallet, but instead it hasn't arrived yet. What, you, I mean, you're you not, can't make this up. You're not using the crummy one, that sh- the one that she didn't want, but it she still got it? It doesn't fit in the wallet. It's, a, it's another big one that like, fits oh, on a keychain. Oh, it's a different chain. thing. Yeah. Gotcha. So... <sighs> That's interesting. I feel better now. I got that off my chest. Well, I'm glad you got it. I shared. And now I, you have an anecdote. Oh, that. wow. This is, I, most of my life, I've been pretty good at this kind of thing, in part because I had a gigantic embarrassment in high school. Okay. I drove to school in high school when I was 16 years old. I had a little Datsun 240SX. Uh, 200SX? Two, yeah. It wasn't the sports car. It was the kind of sporty regular car. Anyway, nobody cares. I, I park in the thing. I locked my keys in it while it was running. The car was running, and I was locked out of the car. And it became like a running joke for the whole rest of the year. I even, my friends ran me for class president against my will. And that was one of the slogans was Kostaki locks his keys in his car while it's running. <laughs> and they were put they, there were posters all over the high school. If it wasn't for friends, right? Of how dumb I am. <laughs> when it's running, it hurts extra because it's so obvious where it is and what's happening. How do you get out of the car and it's running and you lock like it doesn't even make any sense. No. And that helpless feeling. And then Did you, a crowd gather around you? As you're, you're, yeah, running. we're like all standing around a running car I can't get into, <laughs> debating what to do next. Hey, dummy, what happened? <laughs> so dumb. So dumb. Yeah, so yeah, I've, got, I've had plenty of those kind of moments. But actually, because I've had some pain associated with it, it's straightened me out a little bit. Like, I'm super, I double, triple check keys every time I go in and out of a place. And Oh, I mean, I went through those emotions where yeah. I was like... Okay, I'm gonna be extra d- vigilant, and I'm mi- oh, that little note for my daughter. I need to take that out of there and put that somewhere more safe. Why am I even carrying that around? It's just stupid. Why I'm just setting it's myself up for disaster. Right. It's it's uh, <sighs> the hardest part for me is not the not having the thing. It's the feeling dumb part. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's the same reason that I have a mental block and a feet drag about things technical. Like if I need to get a video and cut it and edit it and do, you know, like I put it off because I know I might not be able to figure it out and it will hurt my feelings. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes. I had this week. The one was uh, uh health insurance re up. Like the deadline is tomorrow. So You're I had the anxiety just saying that. I had a sit, a finally sat down <laughs> two days before the deadline because I know the site's going to be glitchy and there'll be a thing, and the upload won't work, and then I'll feel done. I'm just like, oh, I hate all that stuff. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. My vending job, uh, one of my vending jobs, they've been shorting they've been shorting us on our paychecks. Like, things that the money's not showing up that's supposed to be there. Oh. I'm not finding this out because I have a block of, like, I don't want to go into the same deal. I, going into the website and compare. It's so many freaking steps yeah. to get into this site. Right. I probably forgot the password. Right. So then when I find out from my coworkers, like, hey, have you checked your check stub? Then yeah. They probably, you know, they probably shorted you. <laughs> oh, it's just double <laughs> anxiety. Like, okay, now I'm getting ripped off and I have to deal with it. And I have a yucky errand. Right. Uh, exactly. Right. Yeah. And that's I have right. something to do about it that I don't want to do. <clears throat> yep. Forget I, about it. That's my, that's actually one of my big life things. It's not, it's not really terrible, but it is fairly ever present that I have some little naggy thing that has to be done that I don't want to do, and and I push it down the road because I'm afraid I won't be able to figure it out. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty good at doing a thing that I don't want to do if I don't, if I know I can do it. Right? Right? Yes. But if it has a technical aspect that I might end up, ah, fuck, I don't know how to do this, and then I feel dumb, then that makes me put, put it off further. 
There's a, uh, I think there's a page in the back of one of these notebooks. I could, I think I have a whole list of these things that I've been <laughs> putting off and I need to get to. So, boy, can I relate. Um, Kostaki, we need to talk about, I've, I've seen it written about online. I've heard it talked about on stage. It's the divorce of the year. <laughs> Is it? I'm talking about Tom Brady. <laughs> Good, good save. Thank you. <laughs> so yeah. I saw this post a few weeks ago. Yeah, Tom I was Brady. Getting these I was getting these clues on Facebook uh, following my friend Kostaki Economopoulos <laughs> of uh, divorce material yeah. and uh, doing a divorce show with someone I thought he was married to. Yeah, right. I was very confused. Yeah, that's slowly, hit, slowly coming out. I came into Acme and said to Lewis, do you know anything about Kostaki's <laughs> relationship status? And he's not, no. I'm yeah. Like, I'm seeing things on Facebook. I don't know what's going on. I'm very confused. We discussed a little bit over lunch. Yep. And that's how you do. Yeah. Yeah, we're good. We're happy. We're, we're, uh, we're getting along great now that we're not living in the same place. So we had, we definitely had some old school roommate tension, dumbness, and, uh, we're just a little, we're a good match, but not a great match. Just to oversimplify it a little <laughs> bit. I won't get into too many details. I don't want to throw the girl under the bus. She's mm. a good. She's a good woman. Mm -hmm. She's still the mother of my kid. Sure. And we're getting along pretty well. But yeah, we about what well, I don't know what it is now. Six, seven, eight months ago, we we had a a very awkward discussion with the movers. <laughs> we're gonna put all of her stuff in the front of the truck, and we're gonna put all my stuff in the back of the truck, and we're gonna make two stops. That was a weird day, man. And they go. We got it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, We've funny been here enough, before. it was a it was a nightmare for us, but they had seen it before, probably almost daily. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh man! And one of them actually had an anecdote about uh, like a really ugly scene that he was like they were fighting during the move part. Yeah, that goes in the back of the yeah, truck, not the front. You screaming at each yeah, other. Right? <laughs> we didn't have that. We had. Some light, wistful tears, and mostly just like keep your head down and make sure you get everything. Okay. Yeah, we're okay. all right though. We live about a mile apart. We're sharing a car. Yeah, I know that won't be forever, but for now, it's a good answer for us. And because uh, it's L.A., you know, I'm on the road a lot, and then you know, when I'm there, I don't really need the car much. Most of the things are walkable. We talked about that. You're walking to the farmer's market. Including her place. I can. I just jump on an electric scooter. Sometimes I'll drop the car off at her place and get on a scooter and ride home. Well, that sounds fun. Yeah, it's kind of nice. Yeah. The weather's almost always good enough for that to be a thing. Yeah. And we're getting along really well. We're, she's been super flexible about gigs and schedules, and I'm trying to pay it back when she gets a thing. And, oh, okay, I, I don't... It's not my night, but you have a thing. Let's do it. I'm over there and running around with the kiddo. And weirdly, it's you know, there's a there's a big sad arc underneath. But our day to day lives are better, and we're not second guessing it. We're both happier. It's good. That's good. Yeah, that's good. I mean, you know, I'm I'm in my second marriage. I went, you know, I've been divorced. I know how that is. I it's, got uh, two kids with my first wife. It's, it is not an outlier. It, it, it's never <laughs> not something I'm, you know, dealing with. I guess positive or positively or negatively. Right. Mostly good. There's been really bad. There's been kind of bad. There's been right. Can't believe how well this is going. Yeah, yeah. So you'll have the between. full range. And we, not to go down this rabbit hole, but just briefly. We saw up close what happens when it doesn't go well with my prior. So it's extra motivation for us to be good to each other and make sure, sure it's fine. And she's been great. For sure. So the thing that I, I saw something on Facebook, you were did some, and I heard, I heard you talk about it on your podcast a little bit that we could talk about, but uh, you did a performance together to yeah, talk we're about this? we're experimenting with a show that is all about divorce where... It's got a few different elements, and we're still figuring it out. It's it's mostly stand-up, right? She does some straight stand-up about divorce, me, making fun of me. I do stand-up about divorce and making fun of her. Is so, this a roast? You know, it's funny. I actually pitched a roast segment to be in it where we just get super mean and say crazy. 
That I haven't sold that yet. I can imagine. Uh, oh boy, that would be the maybe that would be the final performance. And we and we have some we have some on stage time together where we end up talking to the audience and answering questions. And so we're still it was we just did it as a we did an hour for the first time as this thing with nothing before or after, uh, and it works. It's kind of it. People are interested because we kind of get along, and it's. There's still some like hearty painfulness, and it's funny, and it's got it's got some electricity to it because of the sub. No one's ever seen anything like this. I was gonna say I can't even compare this to something. So we are experimenting with it and working on it. It's like a little project, and we'll see what we'll see what happens. <clears throat> I was telling Lewis, it's the trickier part is the practical aspect of if it was really a show that we're doing in Denver somewhere. Now what happens? We're bringing the four year old, and we're sharing the money. And we're buying three plane tickets. But that's down the road. We're experimenting with it creatively. And if it works as a business proposition later, we'll see. A year from now, like you're it's successful, but you can't stand each other. So she's zooming. Yeah, also she's possible. zooming in right. and you're you are totally possible. <laughs> of like, I fucking I we got divorced for a reason, lady. I'm going to Minneapolis by myself. <laughs> that's what God intended. Wow. Yeah, that's totally possible, too. Right. Wow. I think that won't be an issue, but that is a practical. I mean, we did break up. We don't want to travel around together, at, you know, sharing a toddler, you know, certainly not as a full time venture. If it's once in a while as this like creative and business endeavor, sure. Yeah. But wow. maybe, I mean, that's the thing. And that's what I was saying to Lewis. It, it's show business, man. You never know. It's nice to have another iron in the fire. It's possible. It's totally unlikely, but it's possible that it catches fire and we do a special and travel with it for a few months and then put it to bed. And then we both have this good tape and it helps us to sell tickets, whatever. We don't know. Crazy. And in the meantime, it's a good exercise for me because I'm. it's the subject I'm most interested in writing about anyway. Yeah. And when even when I'm here this week, it's twenty plus minutes chunk of divorce stuff that's yeah. kind of related to that, and that's the that's the subject that I'm most excited about writing about now. So, it's it's kind of a win win win, and it helps her because she's a new comic, and it gives her a platform and a place to work on a thing that has got some other legs to it. So it's it's right now it's kind of been a creative exercise and a win win win. We'll see. Crazy. I know. I agree. It is I'm, a little nuts. I'm looking forward to see what that uh, turns into. Yeah. So I think how, <clears throat> we'll switch. Uh, we'll go in a different direction here. Now, um, I was looking stuff up about you, Kostaki. All right. Seeing uh, what the latest and greatest was about you. And somehow, maybe it was on, I don't know. I don't remember which step led to this, led to this, led to this. But suddenly I got to the list, and it reminded me of uh, your high school that you went to and the famous um, – we've talked about some of the famous people you've gone to high school with. Oh, right. Right? I saw one with uh, the, the the place kicker with the goggles. Rodrigo – what's his oh, name? Oh, Rodrigo Blankenship. Yeah. Blankenship was – his dad was the English teacher in my high school. I didn't end up having him, but he was like a, a figure in the high school when I was there. And he was he was a really quirky like kind of wackadoo teacher that some of the kids loved, so he was kind of a famous teacher in our high school, and his kid uh, was the leading NFL scorer for a few months when he was kicking for the Colts. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, crazy. A couple other uh, kids are from Sprayberry who are in the NFL. Trey Sermon, remember that name? He was a running back for the uh, Niners. He since moved to the Eagles. I've heard that name. Yeah, and then. Um, the one for Jarek McKinnon for the Chiefs. He's had a great year. That's right. Yes, yeah, so we played for the Vikings, and every time I see him, <laughs> that's right. He was here. I forgot that. Do well uh, this season. I'm like, I can't believe he's still in the league. Running backs have such such short careers. He's 30 this year, and he I have him in a dynasty league. And when you you know in dynasty, when a running back hits 30, it's like goodbye. I remember him having a great play for the Vikings when they played those couple years at the outdoor stadium over at the campus. That's been like five years. Like that was a long time ago. Right, I know. I, I'm actually kind of surprised he's still around, <clears throat> but he looks great this year. Yes, he does. Yes, he absolutely does. Yes. So uh, the thing I wanted to get to here was uh, your old pal Buff Bagwell. 
The former professional wrestler. It's been probably ten years since his name has come up between you and me on this podcast. Oh. So that's you can tell from your reaction to me bringing up that name. So there was a guy named what, Marcus, right? Is that his name? Is that his name? I think Marcus, Marcus Bagwell. Marcus Bagwell. That ended, ended up being a uh, professional wrestler. For, I hated him so much. I don't know. Ten years, as you've told me on the podcast before, you hated him. Oh, he was such an asshole. So I, the list I came across of the famous, uh, you know, noteworthy uh, uh, graduates of Sprayberry yeah, you High got it. School, Sprayberry. and yeah. it listed Kostaki and it everybody did. else. Yes. <laughs> And so then I'm like, what's Buff Bagwell up to these days? Oh, that's a fun question. What's well, the answer? Well, you wouldn't believe, so I get to his website, and I'm scrolling down, and then I click on something else, and then it leads me to Cameo. <laughs> and then I found out that Kostaki Economopolis and Buff Bagwell are both <laughs> doing Cameos. <laughs> and I found out, guess who charges more? Oh, I'm so intrigued. <laughs> How much is a Buff Bagwell cameo? One of you is 49, and the other one is 50. Is that right? Yes. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> ah, come get me, folks. I'm a bargain. $49. I just raised my price last week. That's why it's 49 Is that I, right? I was at 39 I was at 39 for the last year. Look at that. I moved up. Look at that. Oh, that's funny. I was like, man, if this was before Christmas, I'd almost be tempted to order one for Kostaki. Who is getting a <laughs> Buff Bagwell cameo? God, that guy. Did we, can I tell the story again? Please, please. If it's been 10 years, yeah, no oh, one it's remembers. Been a while. Yes, please. I was a senior. He was a junior. The juniors our year were almost the way millennials are seen by the older generation. They were like obnoxiously awful not as a, not all the people, but kind of the big names from that class were just happened to be in our class were like kind of douchey, rich kids who were shitty to other people. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And Bagwell was kind of the ringleader of that universe. He always was like super well dressed and very expensive clothes, and he was a jackass to everybody. And uh, so. <laughs> God, this, this story hurts my heart. <laughs> I was at the, there was a McDonald's caddy corner across from the school. And at one point after a football game, I was over there. We got, uh, you know, whatever. We got milkshakes and we're hanging out. And I walk out of the, of the side with the drive through And Bagwell, like, is in his fancy ass truck and he pulls up like there's no reason he just like drives quickly towards us to be a jackass and then stops yeah a little quick and, stop yeah and i was not to be phased by that i already hated this guy so i just like gave him a dirty look and slowly stepped out of the way and he pulls up and he grabs a butterscotch sundae that he had just purchased and he threw it at me and exploded on my chest <laughs> Just for no reason. And he just tears off down the road. And I haplessly pick up what's left of the parts of it from the ground and throw it pathetically in the direction of the disappearing <laughs> truck. That's my, that's my buff Bagwell story. And if that would have... Uh, and then uh, 10 years later, they stole that storyline and used it in WCW. <laughs> <laughs> you, threw, you threw an ice cream at a nerd, and then that guy came back and hit him with a chair. <laughs> but he was our... That was the first year, like the year... It was almost like the Barry Bonds pictures, where you look at like the before and after oh, yes, the yes. roids. It was like this, he was a little skinny kid, like pretty, like good-looking skinny kid. Yeah. And then the next year, he was this super muscular he was definitely on the path to what he ended up doing right right away i'm buff i'm the stuff <laughs> and the ladies can't get enough oh i forgot that but i it's hard, watched it's hard to videos. believe it's real he, he ends all of his cameos <laughs> with that still which you know i don't think you should be surprised <gasps> I didn't even know that was the catchphrase. I'm, I'm happy to say. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't he didn't write that in your yearbook? I did I said don't I didn't really know him. He was just like this ubiquitous pretty rich asshole kid who was a year younger than me. Sure. Sure, sure. Yeah. I saw that uh, Chris Rock is going to stream, live stream his next special on Netflix. Did you I see that? I did see that. What do you think about that? I think it's great. I just saw him. I had a I 
a my like a friend now. It was one of my first employers a million years ago. He he runs he ran at the time and he actually does now a black club in Atlanta. He's kind of kind of tight with Chappelle because he was like gave Chappelle like his first headline date and they became friends and so he was in L.A. for the Chappelle Rock Show and weaseled me in. No and, way. Yeah, I was in the eleventh row for Dave Chappelle and Chris Rock. It's in the round, which is to me a terrible way to do stand-up comedy. It's in the middle. Yeah, but I've never seen one live like that. Though. But they didn't really. I mean, I guess they do it a lot. For them, it wasn't unusual. For me, it felt weird. But man, it's a show. They didn't. First of all, it starts late. No. Very late. <laughs> no. Then there's an hour of things before either one of them steps foot on stage. There's two other comics who are quite good and most deaf. Oh, yeah. Comes out and they rap and, like, it's a show. And then there's a short pause and then Chris Rock does an hour and five. Then there's a short pause and Dave Chappelle does an hour. It was like. And then breaks and then comes back and does seven. <laughs> <laughs> right? It was a lot of show. Wow. And they're great. Yeah. I mean, those might be two of the top five comics to ever live. Yeah. And they're on the same show. It's that's, amazing. That's crazy. So, yeah, Chris can do that because he's safe. His people will be there for the taping. He's got the hour, it's ready to go. He's been working on it, you know? Yeah. There's a there's a chunk on there about the Kardashians that is the signature piece. It's fucking great. I I won't. No, I can't wait. I'm to not going to ruin it. Oh, that's but perfect. That perfect. will be the bit that you'll remember. Awesome. It is really good. Awesome. Final thing we should mention is the podcast you're still doing football. Yeah. All pro lines. All pro lines. We morphed it from Quick Snaps was the prior brand. Right. Now it's all pro lines. We have our we have a logo. We've been doing it about two years under this brand. And, uh, you know, these things are slow to build, but if you count across the different platforms, we've got about 10,000 followers on social media, and uh, which is just now getting to be enough that, like, you post something that really sings and it can kind of go crazy. Nice. It's, really, it's been really fun. Uh, and so the podcast, All Pro Lines, come find us doing that. It's basically, it's football talk and comedy, basically. Yep. Sometimes some other kind of hearty life stuff sneaks in there. Um, it's been fun. I've really enjoyed it. And it's kind of, I sort of rebranded the segments that I do on radio to be the same brand. And uh, it's been good. I, it's It's been a passion of mine for a long time. It's fun. Will you be attending the Super Bowl or any of the festivities this year? I don't know yet. I'm 2023. Next year. I have it on hold because it's p- probable. But it hasn't been confirmed. It's it goes through Bob and Tom and Westwood One. There's a few kind of steps. I did last year and it was amazing because I've done it. I've done maybe seven of the last ten. Yeah. But it's usually a little bit of like a kid with a backpack like going to the big show. <laughs> you know, it's been a little like go figure it out yourself. Yeah. And last year they just like gifted us the perfect setup. We had one of the big booths right on the main drag, you know. Uh, Pat McAfee is right over here. And, you know, like all the big shots have these big booths. Mm-hmm. We had one just as big and shiny as all the other big boys. And we had a producer who was amazing. He literally came to us and goes, uh, I think I can get Marshall Falk. Do you want him? And we're like, fuck, yes, fucking yes. Yeah. We had guests that good. Every single, I mean, we talked to Chris Berman and all the star. I mean, some of the stars of that you that we all know. Yeah, I mean, I visited when they did the thing at the Mall of America when the Super Bowl was here, and I saw the random. I couldn't believe all the the mismatched celebrities that are walking around. Right, they're not all connected to sports. Right, it's really fun. Doctor Oz. It's a really fun, weird, wonderful thing. I, I try to do it every year because I love as a football nerd. It's really. I mean, just walking down Radio Road, one of those things, you're literally like, oh, sorry, Dan Marino, you know, and then you turn around and it's Michael Vick. Yeah. And it's like everyone's got some weird thing they're promoting and they're wandering around doing radio. It's great. I've probably told you this. I've said it on the podcast before. It's been a few years. But I rem- the, when I walked around when it was at the Mall of America, I was there. Uh, I walked up to one of these stands, one of these booths where somebody's doing a radio interview. 
there was no, but there was maybe one other person standing there watching this. Right. And I lean over, I go, hey, uh, who's this guy talking to? Oh, he's going to be the new starting quarterback for the Chiefs. It's oh. Pat Mahomes. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Just a little, like, nervous kid. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. Yeah, I didn't even know who he was, and he's, you know, <clears throat> going to be a Hall of Famer. That's what's fun there about is- it. And I did a piece last year where I had them, uh, had a bunch of the kind of big shots read me one of my jokes, and I put together a reel of, uh, you know, and it was great. Like, Ed Ogeron is like, read me, read me one of my jokes, and some of the other, like, sportscaster guys. It's such a fun, you know, Ryan Leaf did it and Pac-Man Jones and Love it. It's it was just so fun to just wander around and just be in the mix with all these characters that I write jokes about all year. Mm-hmm. And then they're there and it's like a real person. I I, I love it. It's it's uh, it's like football nerd heaven. Yeah. Well I hope you get to do it again. Yeah, I hope so too. Um Fine. Is there anything else we should be mentioning? Or, uh, depending on people listening to this, you still have a chance. Come here on New Year's Eve. There's two shows. Oh, that's right. Um, if you missed it, uh, what the hell? You shouldn't have. Yeah, <laughs> Come you're here dumb. and get a dinner and a show. You're dumb. Come back here and see every week there's great comics. That's what Lewis does. I yep. mean, that's, that's the magic of this club is that you can't go wrong. You can wander in here not knowing who any of them are, and it's going to be a good show. Now, it might not be your particular favorite cup of tea. Comedy is very subjective, but, man, the lineup is so good. Come see Ian Bag. If you don't know, Ian Bag is one when, of the best. When we're best. done here, I need to talk to Brandon about saving me some seats. He is one you. of the best comics in, in, in America. He's not even American. <laughs> He's Canadian. Yep. Dang Canadian. I love Ian Bag. Come see Ian Bag. Yeah, you weeks. can't go wrong any week here. Yep. Thank you again, Kostaki. Great to see you, man. Thanks for doing this. Let's do this again. 484 times. Jesus. Yes. <laughs> Next time will be 10. We'll have some sort of anniversary. Oh, okay. Do we, do we get jackets? <laughs> we'll get some jackets. We'll get some jackets. <laughs> Members only. Vintage. Thanks, buddy. Thank you. Oh, perfect timing. <laughs>